Fat Cats on Thin Ice by Harry Moore A story of intrigue, of business survival and an insight into the world of the professions. Don't forget to press the subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos or hear more of my recordings. Prelude. They can't catch me now. It was dark. There were no stars, just grey clouds hiding a faint yellow quarter moon. He only noticed the darkness when he left the motorway. Until then, it had been dazzling car headlights and, sometimes, the overhead motorway lights that made the world look orange. Driving onto the quiet country roads made him realise that he was close to his destination. He was not really a person for the country, more the suburbs. Leafy lanes near the town and its amenities were his preference. His home was his dream and that of his wife's. It lay on an avenue near the golf course, which meant it was quieter than other areas of the town. He had wanted to live there since he was a young man, courting the woman who would become his wife. One day we will have a house here, he would say, as they walked down the avenue hand in hand. She would laugh, but one day became a reality, and it made them both happy. The pavements on the avenue were lined with ash trees, which must have been planted at the same time, as they seemed to be exactly the same size and equidistant from each other. That amused his wife, as she often teased him about his own precision and need for order. That is why I'm good at my job, he would say, and why my business colleagues like me. He thought of them as he followed a small red hatchback car that seemed to be struggling to find its way down increasingly narrow roads. They don't like me much at the moment, he thought. The stress of business was sometimes too much. I spent all my time negotiating with creditors and trying to find cash. Cash, cash. It's always about cash. It's a daily battle. Running a business is like walking on a precipice. One gust of wind and you're on the wrong side of the valley. There's that and all the personal problems that go with it. If I lose my job, then what will she do? They'll take the house if they get the chance. Then what has she got? Nothing. Anyway, it'll soon be sorted. He recalled going to a breakfast seminar where some management consultants were telling the delegates how they could make their businesses more profitable. He'd come away thinking it was a waste of an early morning, except for one comment made by one of the presenters. She had said that every problem has a solution. He had thought about it through the day and had come to the realisation that she was right. You just had to think about it long enough. And now he had found the solution. She had also said that you have to think outside the box. But they all say that. They don't realise that it's difficult to think outside the box when you're in it and the lid is shut. He turned into the village. Not far now. He had been this way many times, as like many others, he used it as a shortcut from one motorway to the next. As he came out of the village, he stopped the car. He looked ahead and could just make out the small wooded hills and the lake at the bottom. It felt secure here in the car. He had always liked the Jaguar car. The green illumination from the dashboard comforted him. He felt strangely calm. It was weird. The biggest challenge of his life and he was calm. The lake at the bottom was not really a lake but a man-made reservoir. He liked to stop there and watch the wildfowl. He drove down and parked the Jaguar inside the gate overlooking the water. He left the engine running. 
He opened all the windows and felt the cool night air and heard the screech of an owl somewhere. He took a drink from the bottle of malt whiskey that was behind his seat. He had already been drinking at home and knew he was well over the limit. He drank and breathed in the damp air. Things felt and looked better. Now he knew he could win, that he could beat them. He had never lost yet. He put his foot down hard on the accelerator. Gravel and sand sprayed from the spinning wheels and the Jaguar leapt into the air and flew into black space until weight overcame velocity and it fell into the silver lake. The water burst through the open windows. His temples throbbed with the sudden cold and his reluctance to breathe. She's got the house and life insurance and she'll be fine now, he thought, as his mouth opened and the brown, muddy water rushed down his throat and into his lungs. The next chapter is number one, introducing Gerard and some other cats whilst a mouse starts to worry. I look forward to speaking to you then. Bye.